For almost 50 years, Allerton have been looking after and fixing septic tanks and drainage fields. And in that time, we've seen pretty much every problem that you can think of. Today, we're going to be looking at the five most common problems with septic tanks and offering you some solutions that you can try. This is going to be great information for anybody who's got a problem with a septic tank or is thinking about buying a property which has a septic tank. Septic tanks come in all different shapes and sizes, dependent on their age and how many people are using them. They could be brick built or glass fibre. They might have one or two chambers. No matter how they've been built, they all share these common problems. The first thing to say is to make sure that your septic tank is discharging to ground. Now that means it's discharging in through some underground drainage. The official term is a drainage field, but a lot of people will refer to it as a soakaway. Remember, a septic tank cannot discharge directly to a watercourse. If it does, it is illegal and you will definitely need to do something about it. If you think that your septic tank might discharge directly to a watercourse, then visit allertonuk.com and click on General Binding Rules for more information. So let's get started and dive into the five most common problems with septic tanks. Number one, the water coming out of the septic tank is poor quality, it might contain some solids, and it feels as if the water is flowing through the septic tank too quickly. If you've got an inspection chamber after the septic tank, this is a great place to start. Have a look in there and try and gauge what the quality of the water is like that's coming in. Now remember, a septic tank only really settles out the thick stuff, so the quality of the water is never going to be fantastic. But if it looks like solids are passing through, or it's really foul smelling, or it's grey or milky in colour, then there is a problem with the septic tank. Poor quality water can allow solids or sludge to build up in the underground drainage and it will block the way for the water. The water will back up towards the septic tank, and in a worst case scenario, it could back up towards the property. Septic tanks need to be emptied on a regular basis to avoid this kind of thing. The Environment Agency recommend at least annually, but it really depends on the size of the septic tank, the number of people using the tank, and also what's being put down the drains. A few extra empties here and there could save you an absolute fortune in the future. The next step is to have a look in the septic tank itself. Now, you might, when you look in there, you might see that there's a floating crust on the surface. Relax, that's normal, that's part of the process. The oils and the greases will have separated and will have formed a crust on the top. The key thing is, is not to let that crust build up to such an extent that it begins to cause a problem. Again, regular emptying is what prevents that. We've seen a tank which was emptied so infrequently that the crust got so thick that as the water and everything else came in from the property, it literally ran across the top of the sludge and went straight out the other side. Septic tanks are usually designed so that they've got T pieces on the incoming pipe and the outgoing pipe. These are often known as dip pipes. And the idea was to stop the water from mixing up and breaking up that crust when it came into the, into the septic tank. It allowed the septic tank to settle out. Over the years, these tea pieces will have deteriorated and dropped off, or sometimes they get damaged when the tanks are emptied. If you're missing your, your tea pieces, and especially on the outlet side, there's a chance that a floating crust or a buildup of solids will start to find its way out of the outlet and go down into the underground drainage. In the underground drainage, it could start to block perforations in the pipe or gravel and cause all kinds of problems. So have a look in your septic tank and see whether or not your T pieces or dip pipes are still in position. Fixing the T pieces is usually a job that will be able to be done by your local drainage contractor. Number two, the septic tank seems to fill up too quickly or it's overfilling to the point of affecting the drains from the house. All septic tanks rely on a certain amount of water inside of them to do their job properly. But remember, the water level inside of the septic tank 
should always be below the level of the pipe coming from the property and equal to the pipe leaving the septic tank. If you look inside of your septic tank and you can't see the in and the out pipe, then the water level is probably too high and there may be an issue. It could just be a blockage on the exit of the septic tank. If you've got an inspection chamber after your septic tank, have a look in there and see whether or not you've got standing water. If you think that it is a blockage, then a set of rods and a good push towards the septic tank should clear the blockage or try having the tank empty. If you don't think that it is a blockage or the septic tank keeps filling up more and more regularly, then this could be a sign of an issue with the underground drainage. Like septic tanks, the underground drainage can be constructed in many different ways. It may just be a pit filled with rubble, or it could be a series of pipes laid out like a fan, known as finger drains. New drainage fields have to be constructed to a British standard, but the older ones can be constructed in many different ways. They all work on the same principle, which is to soak the water into the ground over as big an area as possible. And they usually achieve this by having a series of perforated pipes laid on a gravel bed. Over time, the water from the septic tank can begin to block these pipes. That's because the water in the septic tank will still contain some little bits known as suspended solids. And they can block the perforations of the pipe, fill in the gaps in the gravel and eventually affect the quality of the soil underneath. If you think that this is happening to you, then the first step is to have the tank emptied. That way you can try and draw the sludge back out of the underground drainage and into the septic tank. Again, if you've got an inspection chamber after the septic tank, then ask the tanker driver to put their hose in there too. Some people suggest having the underground drainage jetted. This is usually a last option. It does sometimes work, but putting high pressure water into the underground drainage sometimes just pushes the sludge further in and it doesn't really help at all. Having the tank emptied more and more regularly will alleviate some of the symptoms, but you may find that this is starting to cost you an absolute fortune and it will be a total pain. If your underground drainage is failing, then you have got some options available to you. The simplest is to is to try adding a bacteria additive to the septic tank in order to improve the way in which it works. At Allerton, we do two products for this. We do a one-shot system called the BioBurst, and then we do a regular system that you would dose every month or so to try and improve the quality of the water. The, the better the quality of water, the easier the existing drainage will find it to cope. The other option is to look to extend the existing drainage. Perhaps there's a wet spot or you've got some extra ground available where you could put in some new drainage to try and help the existing cope better. If that's not an option, then the next option is to think about installing a completely new underground drainage. This is known as a drainage field. Ideally, this should be located in a new area of ground if you've got that available. There are rules about how drainage fields should be sized and constructed, and these are all covered under a British standard. So for this, it's always best to speak to a reputable drainage contractor who has good experience of these rules. The other option is a system that we do here at Allerton, known as the Concept. This is a septic tank improvement system. The idea is that it fits inside of your septic tank and improves the quality of the water which is leaving it. It also lifts the water into the drainage. The cleaner water should be absorbed better and find it easier to find its, find its way through the perforated pipes. And we found, though after fitting many concepts over many years, that failed and struggling uh, soakaways and drainage fields do cope better once a concept has been fitted. Go to allertonuk.com and select Failed Septic Tank Soak Away for more information. Number three, the septic tank smells. 
all septic tanks are going to give off some kind of smell. At the end of the day, they're a tank full of, well, you know what. But the smell should be earthy and it shouldn't be horrendous. Does your septic tank smell like rotten eggs? That's a sign of hydrogen sulphide and the septic tank will be in need of some love. Remove the lids from the septic tank and have a look underneath them. Look for a cream or a yellow residue, which is often a sign of hydrogen sulphide. Now remember, when lifting septic tank lids, always crack them open first to allow the gases to escape before fully removing them. The lids can be heavy and there is a drop underneath, so only lift the lids if you are confident to do so. If not, ask your drainage contractor to help. Hydrogen sulphide can eat away at the metal on the underside of the lids, weakening them. The lids should always be replaced whenever their structural integrity is in doubt. Ask your tanker driver to have a look next time they come to empty the tank. If the water inside of the septic tank is grey or milky, or the crust has broken down, or it's smelling really bad, then this can be a sign that the tank has been upset by some chemicals coming through. This is known as a toxic shock. It's often caused by some extra spring cleaning or engaging a new cleaner or having building work done, particularly painting and decorating. If you think that this is the case, the best thing to do is to have the tank emptied completely and maybe use a product like Allerton's BioBurst to really kick the system back into life. Have a conversation with the cleaner or put a sign up in the bathroom advising people what they can and can't put down the toilet. People often put things down by mistake because they don't have a septic tank themselves. If it isn't a one-off smell, but a general sort of smell in a particular area, then it could be a venting issue. If the smell is around the septic tank, then perhaps the lids of the septic tank aren't fitting very well. They should fit snugly into their frames. Replacing the lids for better ones could solve the problem. Often, septic tanks will have a vent next to them. These are usually at low level. Check that the vent isn't blocked or damaged. Raising the vent to a higher level can often help the smells be drawn away. Sometimes the smell might be located uh, in a natural bowl formed by trees or hedges, or where it's trapped between the garage and the shed. Again, raising the vent up into the air will allow the winds to carry the smell away, just like smoke from a chimney. If the smell is closer to the property, but still outside, then perhaps there's some sewage trapped somewhere which is giving off a smell. Lift some inspection chamber lids and see whether or not the drains are free flowing. If you do find a partial blockage, then try flushing the toilets or running a hose in to see if you can clear it. If that doesn't work, then contact your local drainage contractor for assistance. Check kitchen waste gullies for a build-up in, in the gully or even over the grill itself. This also applies to wherever your washing machine discharges to. If the smell is inside the property, then is it localised to one room more than any other? If it's in one particular room, such as a loft extension, then it may be a venting issue. You might have a vent on the outside of your property. Look for a soil stack which has got a rain cover on the top running up the outside of the building. This should be higher than all of the windows. Is the sink plug hole in the loft higher than the vent? In this case, the air is probably venting out of the plug hole. Raising the vent up higher will assist with this. If you don't seem to have an external vent or your property is quite new, then you might have an internal vent. This is known as an air admittance valve and is often called a Durgo valve. This might be behind some boxing in in a bathroom or potentially in the loft. These have a spring mechanism which can fail, leaving them open and it allows the gases to continuously vent. Replacing the air admittance valve will often help with this situation. Looking after your septic tank, making sure that the venting is up to scratch, having the tank emptied on a regular basis, being careful what goes down the system and potentially using a bacterial product to aid in the performance should keep the septic tank from causing too many smells. Number four, the septic tank is not big enough. 
Septic tanks can be many years old. Do you know how old your septic tank is? Perhaps it's been there since the building was built, or maybe changed during a renovation. The way in which we use septic tanks has changed an awful lot since they were first installed. We use a lot more water nowadays for showering, dishwashing, washing machines, that kind of thing. And also with all the cleaning products that we use, a lot more chemicals are going through into the septic tanks. The size of the septic tank is really important. It needs to be big enough to hold the sewage in there long enough for it to settle out. If the septic tank is too small, the sewage is going to pass through too quickly and there may be solids and other bits that are going through into the underground drainage. This can cause the kind of problems that we've already discussed. Under today's regulations, a septic tank for a three bedroom property should be a minimum of 2,800 litres. You can work out roughly what your septic tank holds by multiplying the width by the length and the depth of your septic tank. Remember that the depth of the septic tank is the distance below the incoming inlet pipe and the floor level. Any distance above the water level does not count. If your septic tank is too small, then you do have some options available to you. Can you try to reduce the amount of water that you're putting into the system? Being a bit more frugal inside of the house may help to hold the solids in there longer. And if you're on a water meter, this also could save you a little bit off your bill. Check that no storm water or roof water enter enters the septic tank. There shouldn't be any. It only takes a little bit of rain to add an awful lot more water into the septic tank in one go. This washing of water can push the solids through the septic tank too quickly and into the underground drainage. Perhaps you could try and improve the way in which the septic tank works to compensate for its smaller size. This could be done by thinking about the types of chemicals which you use within the property. Looking out for chemicals at the supermarket which say environmentally friendly or septic tank suitable is a good place to start. But remember, if you see any cleaning wipes, even if they say flushable, never flush them down the toilet. You could try to improve the performance of the septic tank by adding a bacteria supplement like the type that we do at Allerton. If this doesn't help or if the septic tank is just too small, then you may need to consider doing something more drastic. Are you able to connect to the main sewer in the rain? Of course, only if you have that available. Alternatively, it might be time to consider replacing the septic tank with a properly sized system. At this point, it would be worth considering a new sewage treatment plan. Now, these things aren't small change, but they are a massive step up over the existing septic tank. And if you have a ditch or a water course available, then having a sewage treatment plan will allow you to discharge directly to it. If you're, consider if you're considering replacing your existing septic tank, then this really is a time to speak to a specialist drainage company who has good experience in this kind of thing. Go to allertonuk.com and select sewage treatment plants for more information. Number five, the septic tank is shared by more than one property. A shared septic tank could be located in a separate parcel of land or in one of the property's gardens. The design of it is likely to be similar to that of a single property, but bigger. The sizing of the septic tank is important, as we've already discussed, and it should be big enough to cope with the sewage from all of the properties which it serves. This is particularly important for older septic tanks or where extra properties have been added on over the years. The property which is closest to the septic tank is usually the first to notice any issues. They may notice a wet spot in their garden or their drains could be slow to flush or smells. This could all be happening while all the other properties are unaffected. If there is an issue developing with the septic tank, then it's very likely to be one of the ones that we've covered previously and any solutions that we've suggested should help here too. When dealing with a septic tank, you should always respect the fact that the septic tank might be located on somebody else's property, but you should have some access rights for maintenance and inspection. 
it's always worth checking your deeds to see what's already in place. This applies to the costs as well. All the costs should really be shared between all the neighbours for emptying and ongoing maintenance. Sometimes this doesn't feel very fair if the other properties are occupied more or maybe aren't as careful with what's going down the system. No one likes to spend money on drainage and a bill for remedial works can be a total shock coming at the worst possible time. The best practice is to form a kind of management committee or a registered company so that every, all, the, all of the residents pay into it and they can avoid any nasty shocks. As residents change, then it's always worth speaking to the residents, the new residents, to tell them about the septic tank and give them some advice on what can and can't go through the system. Everybody should be pulling in the same direction. Perhaps giving out a leaflet will also be a good guide. If the septic tank problem can't be resolved, then considering changing it to a sewage treatment plant is probably going to be the best long-term option. The most cost-effective option would be to replace the existing septic tank with a new packaged sewage treatment plant to serve all the properties. But if all the residents do agree, this might be an opportunity to look at separating out the properties with their own individual systems. If you can't get all of the residents to agree, to look after the system or do any remedial works, then you do have the option of speaking to your local environmental health officer who does have some powers. But just remember that everybody who uses the septic tank is jointly responsible for it. So any instructions or directions that the environmental health officer gives will apply to all the residents equally. That's it. Thanks for watching. We've covered the most common septic tank problems and offered you loads of suggestions which you can try at home. Sometimes though, it does feel like you're fighting a losing battle, especially if the drainage has failed completely, the septic tank is leaking, or it's just too small. At this point, considering replacing the septic tank with a new sewage treatment plant is often the best option. These are a big investment, but they'll pay back in multiples because they work better they'll solve the problems that your septic tank is causing and they'll make the property easier to sell in the future. Visit allertonuk.com for more information or email us at info at allertonuk.com. Leave us some comments about our video and any suggestions that you might have for dealing with these most common of septic tank problems.